Welcome to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I'm Kyra Mitchell Lewis, and thank you all for joining. Happy Thursday. I hope everyone is having a fantastic week. I hope um, your day is going well. And with that being said, it is Thursday, which means there is a new episode of the podcast. And today it's a career series episode. It's been a while. So um, I'm really glad to be popping in today um, to chat with you. So the last time we talked, um, we talked about remixing your career. So whether it was the result of something beyond your control um, or you just deciding to make a decision to do something different, um, we talked about some way some some an approach and also some strategies um and also really talked about like what could be some reasons why you might be looking to do something different so we talked about a few things um how if you decided to remix your career some of the benefits right so just going to go through those really quickly here number one was reducing stress uh, I think we all want to live um, as just free lives as possible. And um, maybe if you're in a role, say you're in a role that is a leadership role, might decide maybe I want to just be an individual contributor. And, you know, going from leading people, being responsible for a full team to an individual contributor can definitely um, reduce stress. Also, number two, you might look to change industries or fields. So that's another uh, thing that you might do when you remix your career. Number three, you might decide to just pursue other interests. You may have had a like side business, um, um, something that you enjoy, a hobby that you do on the side, and you're ready to like dive into that full time. And then the last thing is you might be remixing in order to prepare for the next phases of your career or the next phases of life. All right. So after that, I gave you some strategies for remixing your career. So number one was watch your budget. Just make sure if you're going to be making a change in your life, it's no secret, right, that when you work somewhere, you make a certain amount of money, you are probably living to that salary and that amount of money. So if you're planning to take a job that maybe is a little less or you're going to venture out into something different, you just want to make sure that you begin to plan a budget that is going to complement that new lifestyle or that new career or the new job that you're going to be taking. All right, number two, make sure you identify your strengths. We talk about this all the time um, here on Globe Girl. Just making sure you know the things that are unique about you and the things that um, make you the person that you are and utilizing those strengths um, to help you to evolve, to help you get a job or a, you know, the job, the project, the client, whatever it is that you are desiring, make sure you know what you bring to the table. Number three, um, you could also be reintroducing your brand. I mean, we all know as people, we have a brand. So it's really important to make sure that you are able to put yourself out there in front of others and that people know who you are, um, what you do, what you stand for. Um, and it also really aligns to identifying those strengths, right? Because part of what your strengths are is a part of like who your personal brand is and what it is. All right, number four, make sure you update the resume. So if you're going to be going into, like we talked about a little bit earlier, if you are the head of something and you no longer want to be the head of something, it's important that your resume doesn't still really reflect like all the head of things, but you've tweaked that to apply to the job that you're interested in now, because you might be applying for something that is more of an individual contributor role, but your resume is very like leadership heavy. And you may seemingly feel to the person reviewing it that you might be overqualified for the job. Or you, sometimes people may think, oh, well, hmm, maybe are they confused? Like this isn't a leadership role. It's a 
individual contributor or just the manager role. So you just want to make sure that you identify, you know, your resume aligns to the job that you're applying for. All right. Number five is um, if you're currently in a company and you're saying, you know what, the next steps for me is really that I want to do this thing that I enjoy doing. I want to bring my side hustle to my full full time job, but I would still like to work with the company that I'm working with. Talk to your manager, talk to HR about any potential part time or contract opportunities, because let's just be honest, a lot of times when you're in a role and if you were a person, a key important part of the business. It may not be easy to move on from the skills that you offered. It may not be easy to backfill. The company may not even be in a situation to backfill you immediately, or they may be trying to figure out if they want to. So I think you could offer up your services as maybe a contract um, team member um, just until you have time to get your feet on the ground with your new gig and then also your company. So it's like a win-win. All right, number six, use your network. They are there. You've got connections for a reason. So just make sure that you are talking to uh, your, you put those LinkedIn connections to work, people. <laughs> Lord knows, I don't know about you, but I mean, I get so many connection requests in a day. And sometimes it is quite overwhelming with the number of people who are connecting for various reasons, right? So you've got people who are obviously trying to sell you things who connect and say, oh, you're doing such wonderful things. And as soon as you hit connect, then it's like, thanks for connecting. I was wondering, I helped, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) So you've got those people, right? But then you've also got just genuine connections that um, people who may know someone in an industry that you're interested in, someone who may be able to make an introduction. So just make sure you utilize those connections in your network. All right, number seven. If you're in a situation and you're thinking about, you know, I think that I want to try, I'm just using examples. So just uh, just coming up with examples here. So just say if you are a person and you make candles part time, like on the weekends, and you're thinking, you know, I've been making these candles, giving them to my friends and, you know, people have asked me about, can they buy them, whatever, you know, try it out, maybe go to some fairs and sell, you know, sell your candles, Um, you know, try to like host a little, I don't know, I think people still host like parties or things like that at the houses. So maybe host something or have a friend host some type of an event where you could showcase your work. So just try it out, you know, if you're trying to figure out what that next step is, but you still have a job. So still got the job, but you can try that out on the side. All right. And then the last thing is just taking action. Like if you said you're going to do something, like do something. It's all (laughs) fun and games to keep talking about it. But I think you have to take some form of action. So remixing your career, it could open up new opportunities. And also it can really help you to create uh, more balance in your life. And so just really be prepared to, you know, think about like the different strategies that I just mentioned here and figure out how they can apply to your um, your life. All right. And now if you want to watch or listen to that full episode, uh, just check out, um, you can check it out on YouTube or you can just uh, click back here wherever you're listening currently um, for your podcast. All right, so let's move on. So today, I want to talk about how to land your dream interview, right? Okay. (laughs) So, you know, when a lot of us consider our dream job, we tend to begin at the end, right? We're like, I know for me, Um, and my gosh, this makes me chuckle because anybody who's listening, who knows me knows that whenever there's an opportunity, I have already seen it through. Like I am at the place I am doing the thing 
Um, and it is working. It is working in my favor. Like I've already gone from A to Z. So, <laughs> so um, you're, you, if you envision your dream job, then you might also have like already seen yourself working in the new workplace. And sometimes with that being said, you know, I just mentioned that like, yes, maybe I've thought through, you know, the A to Z, but sometimes we don't do that. Sometimes we skip the like interview prep part, which is the essential part, right? Um, to landing the job that we say is our dream job. So it's like, whether you are like applying for a new job or thinking about applying for a new job, there are a couple of things that I think you should do in preparation before you submit the application. Because we know right now, like right now in the time that we're in, you can go to LinkedIn and you can see a job and it's been posted. I mean, it just got posted, I don't know, like maybe six hours ago. And then there are already like over 2000 people that have applied for it. And that is daunting, right? To anyone who might be looking for a new role. So uh, hopefully these strategies or this approach will be able to help you stand out from all those other people that are applying. Okay, so let's just start with the first thing. When you're thinking about um, your dream job, and even before you even get to the interview process, right? The first thing you want to do is like, just do your research. So I find that a lot of times when we are at that point of saying, I think I want to find a different job, sometimes it's like out of a necessity, right? It's we've gotten fed up. We're just at a place of where, like, if I have to stay here any much, much longer, I don't know what's going to happen. So a lot of times we don't give ourselves that appropriate time to, like, really do the research on what do we want next for ourselves. And I think at some point you have to do that because if not, then I think you end up walking into the same opportunity excuse me, you end up walking into the same types of opportunities. So the first thing is, is really like take your time, do research on the industry that you're in. Um, also figure out what types of companies do you want to work for? And that was one of the things that I did Um now it seems like forever ago, but like probably two years ago before I started my job search into like the place where I am now, I did have like a list of companies that I was researching and that I was interested in working for because it helped you, you to like really think about what industry, what industries you want to work in, what type of role you want to have? And also, what type of company is it that you want to work for? So yes, you might have a list of companies that you're like, oh yeah, these are like my top fives. But once you start doing more of that research and looking into the company, then I think that helps, you know, then you'll be able to even narrow that down. Because I think a lot of times we just have like this romanticized view of like a company from the outside looking in and we're like, oh, I really want to work there. But then when you start to digging and you start to asking questions and you start to reaching out to people that work there, then you get like the real. And I would say that it is way more worth it to actually do the work, do the hard work on the upfront to find out the things that you want to know um, ahead of time versus like maybe walking into something that's not ultimately not for you. So when you're doing that company research, right, conduct the research on the company, um, you know, look at the the success that they've had, right? Um, you know, obviously, yes, there's success as a company, but then also you really want to like peel back the layers even more to get to a place of, are there opportunities? What do opportunities look like for the people inside of the company? 
and you really, 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 really want to dig. Like you want to get beyond just like the website page and the social media and the blogs and all those things that tell you who they say they are as a company. You want to find people, people that are either in the company now, people who have um, left the company. And then we talked about this in a previous uh, career series episode where um, about the interview process, right? And just making sure that you are digging a little bit deeper um, into like connecting, doing informational, like one-on-ones with people who have worked there. Because while it seems like tedious, right? It seems like a job, right? Somebody, you might be saying, oh, it seems like a job. Like I had to do all that, Kyra. Well, I think like you'll save yourself on the back end, right? I'd rather know there are companies that I've worked for (laughs) that I wish I'd done (laughs) more of that really like deep, (laughs) almost like when somebody comes to deep clean your house, (laughs) you want to do that type of research because you just want to understand how they operate and what kind of culture they really foster. Because I mean, we all know words on the screen, beautiful photos, beautiful, like, you know, people having fun in the photos, people like smiling, you know, that's all like some, someone took those photos and someone selected those very photos to make someone looking at that page feel like that's a place that they want to be and a place where they can find and feel connection. But I'm sure a lot of you have worked long enough to know that sometimes that can be misleading. So I'm just really here to tell you, like, we just want to help try to like alleviate walking into a situation and the situation is not the way that it was sold to us. All right. Because, you know, doing that deeper research, it will help you to get a closer connection with the knowledge, with, um, connection with and, you know, and give you a lot of knowledge about the company. So also this could very much benefit you when you do all this work, right? When you do all the research, I mean, that's going to pay off in the end. If you leave that informational or the research phase and you're like, still want to work there, then you're going to know lots of information to take into your interview with. So, so when, when my friends, (laughs) All right. So after you do the research, what do you want to do next? Right. Next, you want to figure out how do I create a winning, you know, submission application. So you've done the research. Now it's time for you to go into action and say, you know, I want to be able to showcase and highlight my skills, my experience, and then why I would be a good fit um, for this role in this company. So make sure when you're working on this because, okay, because Lord knows there are, so, you know, there are cover letters. And I know I hear all the time about how we hate cover letters. <laughs> They're so on Instagram. Love it. I mean, I too hate a cover letter, just saying. And I don't think that I've ever, as a hiring manager, I don't think like I've ever saw someone's cover letter and thought, I'm going to hire that person because they had a cover letter and this other person didn't. Um, Not for me. I mean, I think it's really just about like the experience and skill set. So I would just say, you know, when you are working on your resume, make sure that, you know, you are able to clearly and succinctly talk about your skills and your experience. And also something that I just mentioned uh, earlier when we were talking about the uh, remix to your career is just making sure that your resume reflects the role. Like it's okay to have a few different version, versions of your resume because it just is dependent upon the role. I mean, I feel like you can no longer have like a, um, what did they say as a, uh, I don't know, set it and leave it style like resume. I think you have to definitely be intentional about uh, what's included for resumes and the specific jobs that you are applying for. So also 
you want to make sure that you have some form of like um, portfolio. You know, if you are in a space where you can include examples, and I think a lot of times people think like it's only creative roles where you can just have portfolios. But I feel like depending on, like, I'm just thinking out loud, and this just came to me because I was thinking about like, even in finance, if you are responsible for converting your company um, to a new, uh, I don't know, a new system, like I think having like maybe a few slides to talk about the process, like the vetting, how did I vet? How did I get here? How did I get people on board? How long did it take? I think like in any area, if you really want, you're able to demonstrate um, like in a in a story, like how you were able to be successful doing something. So just making sure that you are able to provide examples of previous work, projects, um, results, 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 results. Like we as hiring managers, we care about the results. <laughs> We care that you care about data. So don't let anybody ever tell you, especially I'm going to say, I think in any area, but because I do work in marketing, like don't let anybody tell you that like marketers don't care about the results. We do. Even when you're building brand awareness, there are still KPIs. Like that's what you want to hear. If I'm not hearing somebody talk about tracking and measuring something, then I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't think that we can, <laughs> I don't know that we can talk. <laughs> we don't want to be ROI in the ground because we know that's like, don't come here talking about the ROI, the ROI, but do talk about me, talk to me about key performance indicators. Okay. <laughs> All right. So when you are working on the uh, submission, your application, pay attention to the details. If the job description uh, tells you to refer to a specific person, to include certain details, make sure you do that. I find that a lot of times on LinkedIn, I think people do that intentionally just to make see if people are reading. I find it to be rather annoying because <laughs> it's like, don't put the job on LinkedIn if you don't want the person to apply on LinkedIn. But there are a lot of jobs on LinkedIn that I've seen where they will list out, you know, it will have the button to apply, but down in the very bottom details, it will say, you know, please apply, send your resume to this person, to this email address. So just make sure that you are double checking all the requirements uh, so that your submission doesn't get like thrown to the side because that would be rude, right? I think so. All right, so after you create that winning application and you submit it, then you're figuring out what happens next, right? How do I, what's the follow-up? So you don't want to forget about it, right? You do want to follow up. Um, I would say you could always send a thank you email if you are, if a recruiter reaches out to you, right? Of course, um, thanking them for um, reviewing your application. Also, um, this is a side note, this is just a bonus, but also like when you do get, so back when I was looking for a job a two year, about two years ago, um, I would get, you know, I appreciate it when somebody said like, hey, you know, we've decided we're not going to move forward with your um, application, whatever. Yes, it may be stung <laughs> because it might've been a job I was really interested in, but it also allowed for me to cross that off my list and to move on. But then also you can, I would always reply back and thank them for the time and for looking over it and to keep me in mind if there should be other opportunities in that organization that they feel like my skill set would be a better fit for. So um, I think when you do those types of follow-ups, whether it's like a, hey, we've got it, we'll be in touch, or even if it's a no. Um, I think it shows, you know, how interested you are in the opportunity and the company. And sometimes, you know, it will definitely help you stand out from other applicants. So, you know, and also just, and it also just shows that like, you've got good business and professional acumen. I can't tell you the number 
of times I've interviewed people and they don't send a thank you. I don't know. It's maybe it's me. Maybe I'm a little old school in that sense, but I do just feel like when people take the time because people don't have to interview you. Like, yes, a company is looking for someone to fill a position, but I don't know about you, but as a person who's been interviewing for a while now at this point in life, I just feel like it is tedious. It's a lot of work. Um, It takes time on both sides. So um, just as I really, really like to dedicate and give time to that person who I'm interviewing and thank them for taking the time to talk to us, then I do feel like, you know, just sending that extra thank you and saying, I appreciate that you and whomever else on the team was able to spend some time helping me to learn more about um about the opportunity. So I will tell you, friends, that I have heard from a lot of people that I work with that they do frown upon people who don't send the thank you after the interview. <laughs> I've let people, I've had people, I've actually hired people that didn't send the thank you. <laughs> Like I wanted them to, but they didn't. And I still hired them. But I've had some people that have worked with who were like, "Mm -mm, no, because they didn't send a thank you. So I don't know how I feel about that. All right. Okay. So let's move on. After the follow-up, right? After the follow-up and you're thinking we're moving in the right direction, you get a call, you talk to the recruiter, um, maybe you're getting set up for the hiring manager interviews. At that point, Practice, 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 especially if you're not, if you haven't been in practice for a while with interviews, uh, you definitely do want to, um, you know, look at some questions, think about some, uh, look, you know, Google, because that's like, you know, Google's got everything. So uh, Google um, and uh, practice with a family member with a friend, with another colleague. Uh, I remember doing this. Um, <laughs> I had a previous job with one of my former coworkers that was uh, interviewing for a job. And he was like, oh, do you mind like, uh, you know, doing a practice interview with me? And he was like, because it's just been a long time. I've been at this place for so long and I have been interviewed. And I was like, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's really important for all of us. I mean, there are some standard questions that people ask, but then, you know, I think there are some, um, some new additions to the party, right? So maybe ask some of your friends who have been on job interviews recently, ask them, you know, what type of questions have they been asked? Um, Also make sure that you are prepared with your own questions. And if you are going to be interviewing with like, you know, 10 people, because interview panels these days, they get larger, like um, for every role that I've interviewed for (laughs) recently, um, the panel of people that in which you have to interview seems to grow. So you want to make sure that, you know, once you know who the people are, you want to make sure that maybe you've got a question that applies to their area, or you're thinking of something when you're talking with them and they're discussing um, their, their role and how that role works with the potential, the role that you're applying for, you just want to make sure that you do have a question because there's really nothing worse than interviewing somebody and you are like, oh, okay, well, so do you have any questions? And they're like, no, 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 I think, I, I think you, I think everything's been covered. I mean, I would just ask the same <laughs> question that maybe I asked somebody else, but do have some question, bring something, you know, to the table. It helps that person know that you're engaged in the conversation. Okay. All right. So (laughs) those are my, those are the things that I would recommend that you do if you're trying to land your dream job. So let's just quickly go back. So number one is you want to do your research, do your industry research, and do your company research. So those are the first two things. The third is how creating your winning application. So just making sure that you find a way to showcase and highlight your skills and your experience as it relates to that position and also a way to showcase uh, previous examples of your work. 
um, as well. Uh, the next thing is follow up on your application. So follow up, whether it's a yes for you or even if it's a no, you want to make sure that you send some type of communication just to close the loop. And then next would be uh, last is prepping for that in that interview. So pre prepping by practicing, um, getting, preparing yourself, getting your questions ready, um, going through like question and answers with someone in your household, your family, your friends, colleague, et cetera, whomever. But just making sure that you do some mock interviews to get yourself ready, especially if you haven't done it in a while. Now, if you if you're out there and you've been interviewing, you may not need to practice, right? But if you're someone who maybe you've been in another job for a significant amount of time and you just haven't had that practice um, as of late, you just want to make sure that you do that. All right. Okay. So those, um, those are, th that's it. Those, those, that's it, my friends. <laughs> I'm blah, 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 blah. I know. All right. So that those are my keys. That's what I was trying to get to. Like I was I was a little tongue tied, I must say. I couldn't I like my word, I was seeing it, but I couldn't get it out. And it was just back here in my head. Okay. All right. So those are the keys that I think you need to follow, you know, in order to land your dream job. All right. So before I go, head on over to Glow Up Girl to access uh, all of our previous podcast ep episodes so you can get the career series and also the interview episodes as well. Um, if you are not a member of our Patreon community, you can go there and you can get a Globe Getter membership. Um, when you join the Globe Girl community, just remember you'll gain access to exclusive um, career tips, guidance, resources, and so much more. Maybe some behind the scenes stuff, maybe some thoughts that randomly pop in my head. I don't know. <laughs> but either way, it's all designed to help you create a life and a career that you love. So whether you're starting out or you're looking to level up, our membership empowers you to reach new heights. All right. Always, always um, share your thoughts or topics with me. So if you were listening to this episode and you thought, I want to know, you know, I'm having this issue, you know, or I want to talk about this from a career standpoint, send me an email to hello at glowupgirl.com or you can send me a DM on Instagram. We are at glowupgirl. Um, also, if you are listening on a platform where you can rate us or leave us a review, please do so. I love reading your your reviews. They're so touching and just so um, so awesome. And I really appreciate anyone who is listening out there or watching and you've taken the time to um, leave a review. Really, really appreciate that. Um, also, make sure you're sharing these episodes because sharing is caring. So if there's someone in your network um, family that you're like, they may benefit from this information, please, 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 please share. Um, I want to thank you all. As always, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. And I was actually just thinking ahead here to the next career series episode. And I think we're going to do, uh, we're going to follow this one up with, you know, what to do after you're rejected in a job interview because let's just be honest if we're being honest with each other as friends that we don't always get the job that we interview for and I think as much as it's like great to talk about what happens when we get a job and we start a new job I think it's equally important to talk about what happens how do we move on from um a job, a rejection from a job interview. And I actually have a really good story to go with that. That was just, that just came back to me. So anyway, anyway, friends, um, I hope that you all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day and a great weekend. And until next time, stay focused, fab and glow up. Take care, everyone.